So after you run the OHGOTCE v02 admin tools installer, that's the first step. The second step would be to run the sync tool. Uh, so the first step with that installer, it sets up the workspace, but doesn't actually give you any of the workspace files that are needed. Um, that's what the sync tool is for. Um, so uh, the sync tool gets installed with that uh, installer that I just mentioned. And when you launch it, it looks something like this. Um, so every workspace um, that you set up with the installer would then show up uh, in the sync tool. And so when you first uh, set up, you're going to see initial download button. And after the initial download button, this will switch over to uh, like a sync uh, button. So let's uh, jump over to the application and run through it. So if you still had the installer opened, you could launch it uh, right from here. Uh, but if you already closed it, you can easily open, launch it from the start menu. So if you go to the O's, there's the higher DOT and the sync tools right here. So they both those do the same thing. So I'll just launch it from here. I'll close that since I don't need that. And so um, since I have set up a workspace inside project-wise, uh, and when I launch the sync tool, it says, oh, you have a workspace inside this data source. I need you to log in so that I can go check out that, that uh, workspace and make sure that it's valid and set up correctly. All right, so every data source that you have set up a, one of our V2 workspaces in, you'll be asked to log in to. So I'll log in and then it will launch. So this application has a help menu, just like most other uh, ones that I've written. Um, you're going to see there's a link to the wiki page, which is probably where you're watching this video from. There's also a link, uh, a button to open up the about, so you can see the version that you're running of the sync tool. Um, there's also a running update doc button. This will open up our running updates doc. Um, so let's open up another screen. And um, this is what it looks like. So you can kind of see. Uh, when the last update was, what we actually updated. Um, so it's a pretty good resource to take a look at if you want to see what we've been updating. So just a quick link to get there. There's also a results section. So it can be resized so you can make that bigger. And then as we run you're going to see results pop in here. You can clear the log whenever you want as well as you can copy the results uh, of this section uh, to the clipboard. So now you'll notice that there are two tabs um, because when I ran the um, admin tools installer I only set up two workspaces. So if you had more workspaces you would see a tab for each workspace that you chose to set up. All right. So the first tab right here I can tell it's a project wise location because it has a data source listed here and then the directory from within that data source to that uh, workspace folder and the extra out of it just has a directory. Um, so that's really the only difference between these two tabs is one shows the data source and one doesn't. That's about it. Uh, well you notice they both say initial download that's because I haven't set up either of these workspaces yet. So, you know I, I, I set them up with the admin tools but I have yet to run the sync tool on it. And so the initial download button uh, will works the same way on both of these tabs. Uh, what it will do is it will download um, a zip file of the standards. It will unzip that zip file and then it will put the contents of what it unzipped uh, into the workspace folder. But before we do that, it's important that you guys really understand what this civil version control is here for and what it is doing. So the civil version control, um, this is represents the version of ORD that you want to make sure that the workspace is compatible with. So with ORD, OBM, you know, all the civil Bentley products, uh, there is a civil schema behind the scenes and they will change that schema um, from time to time and when it changes uh, it introduces a compatibility issue. And so the way you know the schema changes is if the second digit in that version number for that given Bentley product changes. Um, so right now the drop down just has 10.10. .10. Uh, that's because this workspace we initially released in 10.10. .10. We had nothing before 10.10 .10 set up. Uh, but 10.11 is right around the corner. 
So, you know, whenever we update a file in our workspace using the 10.11 version, and once we push that out, you'll notice that the 10.11 will automatically show up in this version drop control drop down. So, you want to make sure that you set this uh, to the version that you want this workspace to be controlled to. Um, so, if you open um, a file up, let's say it's version 10.11, and it updates that file, right? So, it updates that civil scheme in that file. Someone with 10.10 can't edit that file anymore. They'll get a warning saying it has newer schema data in it. Okay, same goes for our workspace files. Once we push out um, an updated, you know, say DJ and lib, and we used that newer schema, if you're still running an older version of ORD, you won't be able to see that file when you load our workspace. Um, so that is why it is important to make sure you understand the version control and make sure that you're setting it to what you want it to be for the given workspace. Um, so if you're running side-by-side -side installs of ORD, then you know you might have you know one tab that workspace will be controlled to one version, and another one might be controlled to a different version, and so on. Uh, but as long as you understand what it's doing, it will do all the hard work of making sure that you get our all of our latest standards except for the files that were updated with the newer schema. Okay, so I'm going to hit that um, initial download button now, and you're going to see the results. We'll start up, so it's telling me it's downloading the standard zip file from our FTP site. So you want to make sure that you do have um, access to our FTP site. I think I've had one consultant that we figured out that it was being blocked. Um, so now it's unzipping it. So this is kind of telling you the current process that it's on, and then the results is basically going to tell you if something failed or not. Um, so it says it unzipped it. Um, and now it's going to be copying all these uh, workspace files and folders into the workspace um, location. So if I take a look at that, we should see some stuff. So now there's a standards folder coming in here, and it's starting to throw, throw these folders in here and files in here. So I'll pause it. And once it's done, you'll notice that the initial download button goes away, and there's now an open log button, a preview, and a sync button. So the open log button will just open the log file that is retaining um, everything that it's done. Um, so I, I've uh, reset this a couple times for this video, so you normally normally see one section of initial download and then all the syncs. So anytime it updates an individual file in, a, in like a future sync that you might run, every file that it touches will be listed in the log file. Um, so it's a good little record for you. Alright, so um, the preview and the sync button uh, do probably what you think they will do. So after you've done the initial download, say we've pushed out an update to our workspace and you want to get that update, right? The sync button will do that. It will bring down all the latest files, keeping in mind the version control in the process. But if you wanted to see all those changes before you actually perform the sync, that's what the preview button is. It'll just kind of show you, hey, here's what I, I would do if you ran the sync button. And the what you see or how you see what changes is these sections right here. So there's FTP workspace changes and then there's a local workspace changes. So the FTP workspace changes, if you hit the preview button, um, if there are any changes that we have pushed out since the last time you have synced, they would be listed here. So you could see all the files that we've changed um, that when you run the sync you would get. So if you if you hit the sync button, it's going to actually perform all those and then at the end it'll sh basically list them all here so that would be everything that it's already updated. If you do the preview button, it will list them all here but it won't actually make that update. Um, so the what you kind of can see from these columns is it's going to give you a change type. So the change type would be is this being added? Is this being removed? Uh, the uh, item type would be is this a file or a folder? The path to wherever you know, that, that file or folder is. Um, if that file has a, a schema assigned to it, um, it would give you the previous schema and the current schema. 
Um, so if you see your file in here with a newer schema than what you have set in your version control, then it will still show up here, but it will not bring that down into your workspace. It won't. Allow, the, the sync tool won't allow that file to get updated uh, because the version control is going to take over. Uh, it will also show you your previous and current size of that file and the previous and current date of that file. So that's for pushes we uh, updates we push out. The local workspace changes is for edits that have been made to your local copy of your workspace. So we don't want you editing anything inside that standards folder. So you know right here the standards folder. This is everything we push out and maintain. Uh, so a lot of times people will accidentally change things and they're like, how do I get this back to normal? Well, the sync tool will just it'll just revert all the changes that you made, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, now that's not to say we're not allowing you to modify the workspace. That's what this whole local folder is for. Um, so anything inside this conf any config files inside this config folder will automatically get included when you launch our workspace. So you can make any modifications you want. We're just asking that you leave the standards folder alone. Uh, you know, it's going to help us with our troubleshooting if we're trying to support you um, and, and whatnot. So you know we really don't want you to, to be modifying anything in this folder. So That's what this section is for. And so the change type, it's all these columns are the same. The only difference here is, you know, when this change type in FTP, if it said that I added a file, that means that we added a new file. And when you run the sync, it will add that file. Um, down here, if it says that a file was added, that means you added a file. So when you run the sync, um, it will then remove that file. So it's like the opposite. So it's telling you what you did, and when it reverts it, it's going to basically do the opposite. So if you deleted a file, it would add that file back. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. If something does fail, it will uh, be read in the results section. So you can just give it a quick scan. Um, so if something failed, like maybe you didn't have access to the file at the time it tried to update it, maybe someone else had it open or something. So it failed to update that file, it would let you know. But then the next time you ran that sync, you know, it would try again. So it's not like you miss out or, or, or you skip something. It'll always keep it in sync. Um, so real quick, um, a couple things that's different from the V2 installer, if you guys are used to that. Uh, before, when you ran the initial download button, it required that the standards folder was empty, right? So if you had something in there, it wouldn't let you run initial download. That is no longer the case with this installer. Um, it basically will read through everything and and revert and, and fix it all up. So you can have content there now. So that um, hopefully is a, a huge welcome. You don't longer have to reset. Another thing it will do is it will let you switch to an older schema after you have ran your initial download. So. The previous uh, sync tool for V1, it once you sync to a newer schema, you couldn't go backwards. Uh, this sync tool can now handle that, so I think that'll make a lot of people happy too. That accidentally sync to a, a newer version control than they meant to. Um, now, moving on to the project-wise tab, here, everything's going to be pretty much the same. It'll take a little bit longer because it has to actually put all those documents into project-wise. But I do want to mention that you no longer have to be a project-wise administrator to run the sync tool. Uh, that was something that you needed to have in the V1 sync tool. So with this sync tool, it's only going to be creating or deleting files and folders. Um, so you don't you don't need the um, extra permissions that you needed in the V1 uh, sync tool. So hopefully that will make a lot of people happy as well. Because I know there was some couple CAD admins that didn't that were not the project wise admins, so they didn't get administrator rights and they couldn't run the sync tool. That's no longer a problem. Other than that, uh, that's that's about it. It's a pretty simple tool, but it's pretty powerful in what you you can do with it. If you guys have any future questions about this or maybe enhancements, feel free to reach out out to me and we can see what we can do.